Donald Trump continues to spend more time in court than on the election trail and it is costing him millions and millions of dollars. Joining me live is Louis DiCipio, Professor of Political Science at the University of California. Welcome, Professor. And uh, you can see he's getting frustrated by all of this. He is indeed. He's not used to situations where he's not in control. And right now he has to listen to a judge and he, his fate is in the hands of uh, 12 citizens. Uh, that does not make him very happy. You are a professor of political science. What do you make of it all? I think that um, President Trump uh, is finally, after many years, actually facing a jury of his peers. Uh, I think the prosecution is laying out a, a reasonable case. Uh, it'll be up to the jurors to decide whether it uh, uh, violates New York state law. Um, the more salacious parts of the trial are coming, um, so that will get popular attention and popular attention in a way that former President Trump uh, really doesn't like. Uh, he may also face some sanctions for violating the gag order, uh, where he's uh, allegedly um, threatening witnesses. Not, not a good week um, in the New York trial. And then, of course, uh, his case was before the Supreme Court as well. Uh, which is an unusual situation. Uh, there, he probably got a little bit more of a victory in that it's clear that some members of the court uh, will want to collect or want the district court to collect a little bit more evidence about uh, what is a personal act of a sitting president versus an official act of a sitting president. Yeah, the Supreme Court hearing those first arguments in Donald Trump's immunity case, and uh, they are divided. There's little question. Uh, what do you think uh, the impact will be going forward from what we're seeing now? I know that there's been sugar hits along the way with every mention of a court case and all those felony charges. Well, I think President Trump probably got what he wanted out of the Supreme Court, even though it hasn't ruled yet and may not for another couple of months, in that it will further delay that trial in the District of Columbia, which was about the January 6th uh, insurrection and various efforts to change the outcomes of the election. Um, the delay means that that trial will not happen until after the election, if it happens at all, and that's a victory for former President Trump. Well, what about what's happening in New York? How, what what New impact is that will happen? New York's a different story. That will go to the jury probably in somewhere about four to five weeks. And, you know, obviously juries rule when juries rule. Um, there, uh, the possibility of a conviction is high. Now, certainly former President Trump would appeal that. Uh, but we don't know how the American public would respond to uh, the conviction, um, uh, in this case at the state level, of a former president. There is some evidence from the polling that some subset of independent voters and Republican voters uh, would change their votes based on a, uh, a negative uh, or a, a guilty verdict in this case. We had a discussion here with one of our political experts who spent a lot of time in the United States. And one of the points that he made, and we're moving away from the court cases here, obviously, is that abortion again will be um, a huge discussion point, topic, subject uh, in this campaign. Absolutely. And more importantly, I think it will be a point of discussion in at least one and maybe two of the states that will ultimately decide the outcome of the 2024 election. Uh, here, I particularly point to the state of Arizona, which um, resurrected through its state Supreme Court a law that was uh, passed in 1864, before Arizona was even a state, um, that outlaws um, all abortion. Uh, that means that uh, Voters that are concerned about abortion in, in the state of Arizona uh, will be animated to vote and will be angry um, in their vote. And that probably will benefit uh, President Biden, at least in that state election, and then probably in, in, in many others as well. This this is, uh, abortion mm. has proved to be uh, the strongest issue that the Democrats have going forward at this stage in the uh, election. Let's have a look at Washington. And after months of delay, the US House passed the foreign aid package for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan. It, it came with a fair bit of backlash. Uh, it did, uh, but this was a, uh, a tribute uh, to, I think, bipartisan efforts on the part of Speaker Johnson, uh, Majority Leader Schumer, uh, the White House to bring together a coalition of moderate Democrats and moderate Republicans, a slight minority of Republicans, I should point out, uh, to pass uh, legislation that is has been necessary for many, many months. Um, and the White House was prepared to act immediately in getting uh, uh, weapons to Ukraine. 
And uh, of course, uh, the pro-Palestinian university protests. Um, we're seeing those uh, more and more, a prevalence of those through so many education systems throughout the course of the US. Yes, um, and uh, it's really a nationwide phenomenon now, not just private universities where you often see protests like this, but also public universities. Um, and you're seeing a willingness um, to use the police um, earlier in the process. And I think this is inflaming the protesters. Um, arguably, if Columbia hadn't uh, called in the New York City police about 10 days ago, um, some of the other campuses wouldn't be seeing protests right now. Um, I should note that uh, the semester system in the United States means that many of these schools are getting to the end of their academic years. So where this will continue, undoubtedly, it will probably diminish in a few weeks. All right. Finally, uh, back to the election trail. And despite all the court cases, Donald Trump has a narrow lead. It's, it's very, very narrow. How do you think Joe Biden's going? I know that everyone's looking for every minor little gaffe that he may come up with. Uh, it's almost becoming ridiculous sometimes, don't you? Because of his age and, and everything else that's been uh, said about Joe Biden, the president. Yeah, um, President Biden is under a microscope, um, and he invites that a little bit. His gait has certainly changed. He walks uh, slower and more stiffly. Um, sometimes his language is a little stilted, um, but he's always been a gaffe machine, um, going back to his days as a senator in the 1970s. Uh, that he occasionally makes a mistake probably shouldn't surprise people, at least people that follow politics. Uh, but, you know, President Biden obviously has to be very careful uh, that he doesn't make a major gaffe, because those mm -hmm. can... Uh, those can change the outcome of the election. We can look back to the 1976 election in the United States as an example. And you can't underestimate him either, can't you? The gaffes, you, you have to look past it because he's a very smart guy and, he, and he's beaten Donald Trump at every turn, really. Yeah, um, you know, President Biden is accustomed to his gaffes, so I think he takes them a little bit less seriously. Uh, but, you know, the, the American public is watching both of the candidates to mm. see if they have the... Uh, physical strength, the mental acuity, uh, the what they need to be president for the next four years. So I think both will be very much um, in the public eye. I think this is why there's so much discussion so early in the campaign about whether the candidates will hold a debate, a series of debates, um, you know, however it's worked out, because uh, I think it's very important for both candidates to demonstrate their ability to stand up to their opponent.